Well, a very good afternoon and welcome to the Omar Gales GA Club here in Colooney in County Sligo. We're almost set to go for the first of today's double header in the Gaelic Masters Association finals, the Challenge Cup final between Leitrim, Longford and London bound to throw in now in the next uh, 60 seconds or so in a very pleasant afternoon so far but the clouds are gathering here at uh, Colooney but hopefully the weather will hold up okay but the pitch is in wonderful condition for the first of today's finals between these two sides. Con O'Mara joins me on co-commentary this afternoon. Con, a game to look forward to here between these two sides. Oh it definitely is and, and in the Masters this is uh, our fourth final if you like so just to give uh, viewers an idea of what happens we've 20 counties they play six games in the group stages after which there's a table formed uh, the top four go into the semi-finals for our all-ireland uh, championship the next four go into the shield uh, the next four then go into the plate and this is the fourth competition the challenge cup but even if it is it is still a, a final and both sides here will be eager to to land the silverware call they certainly will our match referee is kieran quinn from galway he's just throwing in the coin there with both of the captains so let's run you through the uh, starting teams we've got a couple of changes to the Leitrim Longford lineup so they're going to start with Martin McHugh in goal it's Enda McGarn, Derek McKeown and Mel McCardle in the full back line Derek Kelleher, John Coyle and Eamon McAvoy across the half back line then Niall Brady and Justin Quinn in the centre of the park Declan Smith, Michael Flynn and Gerard Nerney across the half forward line then it's Mark Connor, Willie McDermott and Paul Murtha inside in that uh, full forward line as for London well they start with Noel Furlong and goal it's Brendan Mulhern Ed McGuigan and Damien Fitzpatrick Paddy Donaghy Damien McKenna and David Cannon across the half back line PJ Meehan and Gary Kane the captain in the centre of the field Connor Moan Joe McMahon and John Reddington in the full in the half forward line rather and then Mark Mulholland Morris Hodnett and Jonathan Douglas in that full forward line so they are the two lineups uh, for this game and there's one or two changes Con I think to the London lineup that you've got just there, we had the, the, the Huey Brennan. You might remember him, the legend from, from Swinford originally that played with Aero Og in an All Ireland club final. Has just scribbled in very good handwriting on my sheet <laughs> that uh, we have number 27 is coming in for number 10. So that's Alan Mooney from Gary Owen is coming in for, for Connor Moan at the, in the right half forward position. So Alan Mooney starts uh, for the London side this afternoon. In terms of conditions and wind, well, there's a little bit of a breeze blowing from left to right as we watch it in the opening half, and it looks like that's going to be in favour uh, of the London players in this uh, opening half, so they will have that bit of breeze at their backs as we get set to go now for the first of today's finals and con on an overall sense a great occasion here today with the two finals taking place oh absolutely and really the story of the, of the masters finals uh, of the four finals is london like the amount of commitment these guys put in financial and otherwise to be here you know th this is their first final i know it's the fourth it's our fourth final but th this will mean so much to them david i brought them in in 2016 he's seen them the whole way through we're going to national anthem here and so we'll pause now for a round of you Well, that's a run of eight ringing out around the Omar Gales J Club here in County Sligo and we're almost set to go now for this uh, Challenge Cup final and away we go and immediately it's London into some early possession. They've got the advantage here too but this one is hacked forward. Nice little attempt at a pick up there from the centre half forward Joe McMahon doesn't quite come off and that allows Leitrim Longford to gain possession for the first time. That's their midfielder Niall Brady. Solo almost evading him but they still hang on to possession play being allowed to develop by Kieran Quinn and Leitrim Longford having to work it through the hands into that bit of a breeze in this uh, first half and they've done well bringing it up this main stand site where most of the supporters will be this afternoon and now Leitrim Longford approaching from that far side of the field London flooding players back in behind the ball we can see their corner forward Jonathan Douglas is taking up a position on his own 45 here so setting out their stall in the early stages there's a free uh, for Leitrim Longford in the middle 
And plenty of players getting a touch there in the opening play. Yeah, what you'll see in Masters at over 40 level, the first 10 minutes can be quite hectic, Carl. <laughs> uh, the speed will all be used up and then it, it gets, you know, it settles down a bit. Uh, players get more time on the ball. But you can imagine in a game like this, tensions will be high for the first few minutes. It'll be here and scare. And there's a nice ball across to the far side. Down to the corner from Mark Connor. Nice little ball down inside, but that's good defending from London in their own full back line. And they come out with possession now through David Cannon, the wing back. Nice little measured ball forward. As they try and build up, Leitrim Longford's turn now to flood bodies back in behind the ball. Ball down the line from Alan Mooney. That late inclusion on the starting team. Good work on the far side. And now it might open up here uh, for London as they approach that 45-metre line. Dish back to PJ Meehan. Meehan threads that one forward. Now back outside. Man sitting in the pocket with a shot here. That's Mooney. High up into the afternoon sky. It's going to drop dangerously inside. And the break might favour London as well. Well, two of their players clash into each other. Then the foul is committed. And London with the free. And this is a good chance to get themselves off the mark. Yeah, and PJ Meehan, the, the midfielder there, very athletic looking. We saw him involved a number of times in that move, and if he was fouled as he went down bravely to, to pick up that ball. And a nice little setter for, for the exiles here to, to get them off the mark, you would think. Yeah, this one just uh, inside the D. And a chance for them to open their account after the early stages here. Just three minutes gone in the opening half. As London now with this free. Effort is sent in by Joe McMahon, but that one has gone to the right and wide. I think he thought that might, might have uh, gone over. I think some of the players are claiming that it has as well, but the umpire was fairly certain. And that's uh, a disappointing miss from a London point of view. It is, and, and having seen Joe play before, he's a really good footballer, but he did he looked very tense kicking that, and I suppose that's the, the bit of occasion, even at over 40s, it can get to you. It sure does, as that ball from McHugh comes out towards the sideline, back involved again as Joe McMahon, who... Knocks that one forward towards Morris Hodnett, just being forced wide here, but he's going to have a go here off the left boot. That looks gorgeous uh, from Morris Hodnett. That's a wonderful score. Well, they might have missed a handy one a couple of moments ago, but that's a that's a tremendous score. That was a sweet strike from, from out here on the right-hand side, and, you know, like an arrow straight over the bar. Martin McHugh, uh, you know, viewers might might remember Martin from from his days in Leitrim when they, when they won that famous uh, the, their their famous kind of title over John O'Mahony anyway, way back in '94, I think it was, and we see him clipping the ball out there neatly. Yeah, nice little kick out, and Martin has just uh, published a book as well. And we wish him well with that as he launches that. And there's a really good interception from Alan Mooney. Now a chance here for London perhaps to get a goal. Well, Hodnett's going to settle for the point and knocks that one over well it's two in a row for Morris Hunnan and he looks like a really good player at full forward really cultured left boot and London lead by two points to no score yeah and I suppose at all ages if you wait on the ball you can be in a spot of bother and that's what happened with Leitrim Longford there that tricky kind of a ball that you, you just can't drive at uh, and uh, the interception from London and it looked like there was a goal chance on for a second call but they'll be happy with that two points up and in control of this game yeah the kick out now from McHugh this time they go long out towards the middle of the field, rising for that one was Niall Brady, but again it's London who take possession. Good work here from John Reddington, brings it back outside towards Mooney, and then he dishes it towards Hodnett, who's come out from full forward this time. Touch there for Damien McKenna, the Taras club, and plays it inside now as far as John Reddington again. Really good uh, hands there from London, they're moving about with real confidence Really look like a well-prepared team so far as they play this one inside now into that full forward line space here perhaps for London to get another score. It's with their corner forward Mark Mulholland coming back outside now. Might be interested in a shot here. Really good defending uh, from Leitrim Longford there on that occasion to snuff out the danger. London still battling for it but they've got themselves a free Leitrim Longford and that might, just might allow them to build from the back here and get themselves up the field because London have enjoyed a lot of territory so far. Again, the pressure is good from London high up the field. This time it's Morris Hodnett applying the pressure. Illegally so, though, says Kieran Quinn. And if you're just joining us on the live stream, it's London leading by two points to no score. Morris Hodnett has kicked both of them. We've played six minutes now, almost of the opening half. Good hands from the Leitrim Longford player wearing number 18. Nertney long inside now. And that one is going to be a free from where the ball was kicked. Gareth Nerney doing well in the build-up. And it's a free for Leitrim Longford, just inside the London half. With both teams are well stocked with big players, aren't they, Con? Yeah, very big, um, you know, you know, physical players, but it's been played in the right spirit. Kieran Quinn from Galway, they're refereeing very well so far too. Good hands from the corner forward. Mark Connor 
Nice ball inside as well. Things opening up here for Leitrim Longford, but then a really good block down by Gary Kane, the captain. Doing very well back there. Nice interplay between Paul Murtha and Mark Connor for Leitrim Longford, but London come away with possession. Good carrying of the ball here from John Reddington, then gets bottled up by three Leitrim Longford players. They thought the ball might have been overcarried, but play continues. Brendan Mulhern plays it across to the other cornerback, Damien Fitzpatrick. Now long from Damien McKenna. Just getting the angles wrong there on that occasion. And that's a line ball for Leitrim Longford on the far side. You've mentioned it, Carl, about you know London, how, how well they seem to be set up and prepared. You can see that with them. They've a real drive about them, and you know you can see all of their players so much tuned in. You know, Leitrim Longford are only a couple of points behind, and they do have good players if they can if they can get at it. But at the minute, it, look, you would have to say that London have have a, f a good foothold in the game and, and seem to be on the front foot. There's a free for Leitrim Longford. Great ball, and all the way across. Here they go now, Farry inside that. London rear guard still going forward. Leitrim Longford. Then the pressure is applied on the midfielder Niall Brady. Back outside it comes. Ambitious effort there from the corner. And that's gone uh, to the right and wide. First wide of the game for Leitrim Longford. But more encouraging there in the last uh, two or three minutes for them. They've had a couple of attacks. Yeah, that was a great ball. Great ball out to the wing. Now, as you can see, even on the screen with Leitrim Longford, it's difficult to make out the numbers. That light blue on the numbers in the back isn't helping. And I think they've signaled a 45 yeah, here. So they, they have. have they certainly have. So that obviously uh, took a little bit of a touch on the way through. But to make excuses for the commentary team here, as you can see, <laughs> the, uh, the numbers on the Leitrim Longford jersey, um, just not fantastic. Well, they've taken that one well. That's really good from, uh, that's uh, Mark Connor now. He's going to take on the shot. It was just off balance as he struck Great that score. one. But that doesn't matter to Mark Connor. That's a really good score uh, from the corner forward. And Leitrim Longford off the mark and they close the gap now. It's London in front by two points to one. But that's a... That's a fine point. Yeah, a beautiful bit of interchange there. I think it, it, it was with uh, Garrod Nerny is, is the guy that, that he, he played it with there. The son as a sub, took it back and, and swung it over there from out on the right-hand side, under pressure as well. So a first point for Leitrim Longford. And now the kick-out coming from Noel Furla. Goal short, gathered by Paddy Donaghy. And now with Jonathan Douglas, who's... Still back there on his own 45. Brendan Mulhern now. London looking very comfortable on the ball so far. Mulhern happy enough to drive forward here. Turns back in luck of support, but nothing on. So keeps going forward. London attacking the dressing room end in the opening half. Nice little pick up there from Morris Hodnett again. Two points already for him. Dishes that one forward towards Alan Mooney. Back outside to Hodnett once more. Probably just outside the range here. Now he might get a shot away. You would think with that breeze at his back, but he's at a difficult angle, so keeps a hold of possession and recycles it back outside to Damien Fitzpatrick. Very composed build-up play here from London as they bring it all the way back around. Nice ball into the path of Damien McKenna. They switch the angle of attack. Really good stuff here from London. As Gary Kane now tries to drive that one forward, but well dispossessed by... Niall Brady back there for Leitrim Longford and they snuff out that attack and now trying to work it through the hands into that breeze doing well then the foul is committed by Jonathan Douglas it's a free for Leitrim Longford they waste little time in taking the ball forward good hand in though by David Cannon and that ball's gone out for a line ball in favour of London on the far side then it goes forward frantic play so far Nothing being spared by either side. Now it might spill kindly. Joe McMahon going forward for London. Takes on the shot here. Won't have the required distance or the accuracy. And it's easily gathered back there by Martin McHugh. Player down. We're going to have a little bit of a pause. And uh, it's still London leading by two points to one after the early stages here in this first half. You can see there, Carl, in that snap, uh, snapshot of play. Not that it was any fantastic, uh, expansive football, but the, you know, the, the way that guys are going for that ball, that loose ball on the ground, they're really committing themselves into it. That's why we have a London man down here. He, went, he dove in bravely on that ball to, to, to flick it on. It just shows how much it means to these guys. And I suppose that's the beauty of Masters football, is that these fellas would have played all up along, underage, you know, minor, 21, seniors. And then you get to a stage in your life where, you know, you, you're, you're just not, your, your mind knows where you should be, but you can't get 
get there. So to have football for guys of the same vintage is fantastic. But having said that, there's guys out there I'm amazed to see. Well, I'm not amazed to see him out there because he's such a good player from Ostrom, John Coyle. I know he played for uh, Ireland in the Auss- when the Aussies came over in 2016. He's over 40. He's well over 40. He <laughs> could be 47, 48, 49. Looks like a young fella out there, you know. So it's great for these guys to have an outlet where they can go and compete and better again to represent their county in doing so yeah that's the beauty of the Masters as you say Con has play ready to get back underway here with the free for Leitrim Longford but that has not gone to plan and that has gone out for a line ball for London all the way down in the corner there Morris Hodnett has gone over to take control just wonder might he be interested in a shot here he's just inside that 21 metre line with that left boot well, he's going to opt against it in the end, but that's a nice ball inside. And now it might work out for Mooney. Lovely hand pass back as far as Donaghy. And that one is over the Great bar. Score. Well, that's a really well-worked point uh, from London. They extend their advantage again to two. They lead by three points to one. And Paddy Donaghy on the mark. Yeah, great score. Very, very simple, but executed very, very well. And when Paddy Donaghy got that ball there, you know, so, so composed on the ball. I've been very impressed with him. He's up and down the field. He looks very comfy on the ball. All, as you said earlier, Carl, all the London players look comfy in possession. Big battle for possession in the middle of the field. Hacked forward by London again. They really have the bit between the teeth. Off the shoulder is PJ Meehan driving forward here. Leitrim Longford looking a bit exposed. Perhaps Hodnett now trying to weave away from the challenge. Gets it back outside. Worked in field again. But then the Leitrim Longford bodies intervene. And all the way back there getting a hand in too was William McDermott. The full forward now Brady coming forward as well. He's looking for an option on. There's only two Leitrim Longford players up in an attacking position, you could say. So the space here to drive into for Jarrod Nerney. Ball spills back outside. Mark Connor has got one point already. Might he get another here? He's still going. Oh, that's oh, a great beautiful. kick if it has the distance. It certainly does. That's a tremendous point. Sorry, Con. Mark Connor over the bar. And uh, a second point for Leitrim Longford. And the gap is won again. And again, that man, Gerard Nerney, was, was involved in that along the way. Uh, I thought that at that stage that David Cannon, the wing back, had done enough to dispossess him. But we had Mark Connor picking up the pieces and a sweet strike, as, you, as you'd see, some, some really good scores from play here. Peter Long would probably be happy enough, will they, at this stage, playing into the breeze? Absolutely, because you, you know you'd have to say London have looked the more impressive team, but um, you know, Leitrim Longford are containing them well enough at the back. They're not getting any easy shots away. The, the one thing you see with London, though, they're full of running. You'd wonder, you know, they have a bigger panel with them, believe it or not, than Leitrim Longford have with them. So as the game goes on, the, the gaps might open with, with this strong running London team. Well, there's some brilliant work in an advanced position uh, from Leitrim Longford. That was Garo Nerney, I think that forced the London player into overcarrying possession it's a free in for Leitrim Longford and a chance here to level things up which all things considered about halfway through the first half is not a bad return at all given the start that London made and a stat man Mark Connor from the Ballymahan club standing over this one just outside that 21 metre line as we say that draft of a breeze into his face here in the first half gives that one plenty of air time but it has the accuracy third point from Mark Connor third point for Leitrim Longford and it's three points apiece in this Challenge Cup final. Yeah, and uh, James Breslin and Seamus Sarhan on the line there will be delighted, as you said. M- you know, maybe not. The, London have been the more impressive of the two teams, but as you said, they've got the wind and it's it's three points apiece. And when you have a player like Mark Connor and especially Garrod Nerney, very impressed with his endeavour there. Like he t- he he got something out of nothing there. So they will be they will be happy with that. The man making a dart for the short kick out here was Paddy Donaghy instead. Noel Furlong is hanging on here and going long. Out towards our commentary position. Well gathered by Gary Kane. And gets the hand pass away quickly. Nice little work off the kick out there. That was a good ball forward from Paddy Donny. One point already for him. Two from Morris Hodnett who's on possession right now. Dinks a ball in over the top. That's lovely play. There might be a goal on here if the ball went into the man inside instead. It's Brendan Mulhern popping it over the bar. Well, there may have been a goal on. They settle for the point. Good score it is two, and they lead by four to three. Yeah, again, great move. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on screen there, but the movement off the London kickout is fantastic. There's lads making runs for for short ones. If it's on, they get it. If it's not, it's open in the space. And it was played across there in that first half over to over to, to, to PJ Meehan made the break and started the whole lot on with a ball back into Paddy Donahue and well finished at the other end. Goal on, as you said, but they'll be happy to re-establish the, the lead. Well, the exchanges around the middle have been hugely physical. Every ball, as you say, Con has been 
competed for it, a real ferocity. Evidence of that there from that kick out again. Leitrim Longford come away with it and they've played the ball out towards this stand side. Nice little ball forward from Eamon McAvoy inside towards Mark Connor. The ball spills dangerously there and who's going to claim it? Well, there's bodies diving in around the garage and Ernie does well back outside to McAvoy once again. But there's the London Endeavour that we've spoken about working to good effect. It's tidied up by PJ Meehan. Plays it back towards John Reddington now. Diagonal ball is a good one towards Mooney. Really good build-up play again. Mark Mulholland has a yard or two off his man down there and he's going to go at him as well. Senses there might be something on here. Well, he's got himself for free. I think he thought goal was on there. If he got beyond the challenge, he's hauled down. It's a free in for London. Yeah, and for any cornerback, you don't want to see an nippy guy getting it that's going to take you on in the ball. And it's a free in for London, so a chance for them to extend their advantage. Approaching that 20th minute mark now in the opening half. Very entertaining game so far. London leading by four points to three. And the chance now with the free. They had one free earlier on in this first half that didn't quite go to plan. But this time, Joe McMahon pops it over the bar. And London lead by five points to three. Yeah, you'd have to say on the balance of play, they deserve a, at least a two-point lead. They've had a couple of goal chances, but Leitrim Longford are, are hanging in there. And, and as we, we've mentioned before, with the likes of Mark Connor up there, you, you always have a threat. Oh, ball spills again in the middle. Big collision. Players are okay. They're all getting up to move away. Leitrim Longford have got the all-important ball. It's with uh, McManus now. Ball inside is a good one. London's turn to defend and just a little bit too industrious there was David Cannon, the wing back, and it's a free in for Leitrim Longford. Mark uh, Connor standing over it. And again, that man, Gerard Ogenerny, he's been involved in, in all of their scores thus far. You know, he, he's really busy in there. Uh, a tricky player, full of running, full of full of go, um, and, and drew the foul there. And with Mark Connor's accuracy so far, I better not put the commentator's curse on him, <laughs> but you'd, you'd fancy him to get this. I think that was a yellow card flash in the direction of David Cannon there as well. As Connor now comes with the free, oh, curls that one over with Lovely real story. aplomb. And that's uh, a one point game once again. London five points, Leitrim Longford four points. Yeah, Mark Cannon's just going to have to be careful there, and he's playing very well himself. But but on Nerney there, he's a tricky kind of player. That's for an accumulation of fouls rather than anything that was too drastic about that one, I would think. So it's one that David Igo and his team will, will likely keep an eye on. Long kick out this time from Noel Furlong all the way yeah. down the field, but good take in the middle by Niall Brady, and that sets Leitrim Longford on the attack once again. Connor is out in front. He's been the real live wire in this first half. Battle for possession there, but it's London who come away with it. David Cannon does well. Exchange of hand passes sees Connor Moan into possession, wearing that number 10 jersey. Good hands from Joe McMahon. Long ball inside now. Good There's ball. only two men in there, and this might work out. Gold chance for London. It's oh. flashed over the bar by Mark Mulholland. Well, they had a couple of gold chances earlier in the half. This time it was a real guilt edged one. But a flash is over. Yeah, but again, a beautiful piece of play, the way they worked it across there. And the ball in over the top was just superb. And you would have fancied a, a goal on it. But uh, in the man and goals, Martin McHugh came out quick off his line. You know, didn't give him time to settle and just over the bar. But again, getting something from it and keeping that, that two-point gap between them. So London leading Leitrim Longford by six points to four in this Gaelic Masters Association Challenge Cup final. Approaching the closing stages now of the opening half. Ball inside from JP McManus for Leitrim Longford. Brady now dinks it into Mark Connor, who has three points. Hand pass over, loops over the top, and now the opportunity for the score looks like Willie McDermott there. And McDermott slots it over the bar. And Leitrim Longford backed within a point once again. Well, this is developing into a really entertaining contest. London six points, Leitrim Longford five points. That's another fine score from play. It is surely, and I think uh, J that isn't J.P. McManus. I think that's the only mistake in the numbers. I know J.P. McManus from Carrie Gallon, a big loss to, to, to Leitrim Longford. He would have played Aussie rules as well, international rules. I think Jerry Carberry is the man that stepped into the breach there that won that ball down here under us. But a super score by Willing McDermott, um, and that's got him right into the game. Certainly has. Another kick out. The battle forward in the middle. Carberry doing well, applying the pressure high up the field. Just getting to know his opposite number there. A little better, Paddy Donaghy. 
Uh, as the ball finds its way down the field towards Gary Kane, the London captain. Again, Leitrim Longford are cut open here. This time it's with Joe McMahon. McMahon pops it over the bar again. It looked a little bit open there from a Leitrim Longford point of view, but it's another score for London and they lead by two again. Yeah, sweeping move again from the kick out. They worked the kick out so well, and you know, their heads up football, the kick passing is absolutely superb. And the ball in there to, to Joe McMahon uh, from um, was it from the midfielder, was it, was it from Gary Kane or PJ Mead? I'm not sure. A great ball in, and that's great for Joe McMahon. He's had a couple of efforts that, that haven't gone his way, and that just gets him uh, into the game, too. Superb take in the air from Justin Quinn there for Leitrim Longford. Very entertaining stuff in this first half as the ball comes inside towards Mark Connor. This time, Leitrim Longford's turn to try and expose that London defence as they flood black and green jerseys back in behind the ball. Connor takes it off the shoulder. Acute angle here being pursued by Damian McKenna. Connor now has the fullback Ed McGuigan for company as well. Back outside towards Garage Nerney. Nerney takes the direct route towards goal. Hand pass inside. Doesn't go to plan, but Nerney might get it again. No free, says the referee. Just look at the tackling here from London. It's absolutely brilliant, and they might just have won themselves a turnover here. It's actually a free in. It's been touched on the ground by Damien Fitzpatrick. They almost had won it back, London, after really chasing down possession with all they had there. Oh, and moved in for a bit of descent. And in fairness to Kieran Quinn, he is letting it go. You know, you're looking, saying, is he going to give a soft free? He's not giving the soft free. Uh, and both teams are playing to that, and they're playing within the rules. There's nothing dirty going on, but it is physical. Uh, and I think he got that one right. I know that London would say that as Damien Fitzpatrick went down, he got a nudge, but there was it's a physical game out there, and he did touch it on the ground. I've been impressed with the, with the way he's, he's, he's handled this game so far. And, and just as he's taken this, uh, I, I see down here uh, in front of us, Sean McCabe, he's, he's the, the main man in MFC Sports that have, have provided this streaming for us and we're very thankful to him for that that free has gone in I think it's just curled inside the post just inside yeah just inside so it's gone over from Mark Connor so it's a one point game once again London seven points Leitrim Longford six points and very little to choose between the teams here so far this kick out again high into the afternoon sky there was a yard or two there for PJ Meehan and he took full advantage by claiming the high ball so London playing with two men inside in the full forward line. One of them is Mark Mulholland down there. And they're just trying to weave away from the defenders back. There's a sweeper from a Leitrim Longford point of view back there as well. Just to shore things up as Joe McMahon takes possession in front of the London dugout on the far side. And now he takes a run around a couple of defenders and plays it inside now again. They're inside the Leitrim Longford defence. And that one has popped over the bar. Looks like Mark Mulholland again who's been a real live wire at corner forward. And make that his second point of the afternoon. Lovely score, and we see coming in there for London, big man, number 22. And he's a big name, Vinnie Murphy, but it isn't the Vinnie Murphy of uh, Dublin vintage, uh, the North London Shamrocks man in there on the edge of the square, bare on the edge of the square kind of stuff, Carl, <laughs> going on. But again, London are very, very efficient once they get inside some fantastic scores. Well, they haven't used that route one ball, have they, Con, really? They've been very measured in their build-up so far. They have, and uh, you know what? But I do see them looking up, and if they see the space in there, I think they will start to let it go. And, of course, at any level, it saves the legs at this level, saving the legs. <laughs> <laughs> is, is very very important but that ball has been fouled by Leitrim Longford looks like uh, Michael Flynn the man to be punished there on that occasion it's a free for London as they flood some bodies forward here and now the referee is going to throw the ball in perhaps for some afters so the two midfielders battle for it spills towards the centre half back Damian McKenna he's fouled and it's a free for London all smiles after that as we approach half time here. So London leading by eight points to six in this Challenge Cup final. We've got Johnny Gall versus Galway in the Shield final coming up for you at half past three. So lots to look forward to for the remainder of the afternoon here at the Own More Gales GA Club in County Sligo as possession finds its way towards Gary Kane. Plays it across to Brenda Mulhern. Nice ball forward from the cornerback who's kicked a point. The aforementioned Vinnie Murphy coming out the field to get on ball and plays it across too. That's a good one where there's lots of space here for Damien Fitzpatrick who's looked full of running in this first half. He's continued his foray forward here as London take a shot through the man wearing number 23, Neil O'Shea. And that's one of the points of the game so far. It was an ambitious effort from quite a distance out but he split the post and London lead by three. 
Isn't it great to see it? And you can see what London did there. Ball down one side, played it quickly across. Vinnie Murphy with the with the change of play, moved it on, and a super score, a super kick there by Neil O'Shea um, to, to put London three points ahead for the first time in a while. So London nine points, Leitrim Longford six points. And Leitrim Longford would just like to get a score or two before half time because they had closed the gap down on a couple of occasions to a single score after London's promising start here. But London are finishing the half strongly. It goes forward towards John Madigan. Having a go here. Another tight angle. It bounces dangerously. McHugh is equal to it. Well, the fist came in on it from Vinnie Murphy. There was a high ball in around the edge of the square. But uh, Martin McHugh was alive to the danger. And Leitrim Longford survive and come out with possession. Well, they haven't scored a goal, but they've had a couple of chances in this first half, London. To rattle the back of the net as Leitrim Longford now go down the other end. Mark Connor ships a hit, but, well, initially retained possession, but then it spills away. And now it finds its way towards Gary Kane. Out to Brendan Mulhern. And again, the methodical build-up from London here. They go back, comfortable on possession, happy to recycle. Murphy now, hand pass inside. The big man in midfield, PJ Meehan. Well, that was a decent-looking ball in towards Mark Mulholland, who just lost his footing at the crucial moment. He might just keep this one on the field of play. Well, no, it's actually gone out over the whitewash, and it is a wide ball as we approach half-time now. Yeah, you can see here too, um, viewers might be familiar with it, Masters level, there's rolling subs, uh, so you can use as many subs as you want, so roll on, roll off from the break and play, we can see a sub coming in here for Leitrim Longford, and London have brought on a few subs uh, there, and we've seen, it's given the, that bit of extra energy again, um, so if you come light on the subs front and the other team has a, has, a, has a crew that they can roll on, roll off, that can take its toll too. Yeah, the fresh legs certainly giving London a renewed impetus here, heading towards half-time, as Martin McHugh assesses his options from this kick out goes short in the end London try and push up good work there can't touch it from Leitrim Longford but he's got to let that one go and let the defender come back and claim it and eventually they gain control of the situation out as far as Eamon McAvoy up towards Niall Brady now he's looking inside for an option short hands from John Coyle in towards McAvoy but it's all just a little bit laboured from Leitrim Longford and that allows London to get possession once again here's another man coming off the bench Thomas Gallagher I think he wants to get this one onto the left boot instead plays it back towards Connor Moan well he spotted ball. a pass there that's a wonderful ball across the field of play and now the chance for the opportunity and the score from Neil O'Shea well he's wearing number 23 but he's got two points Neil O'Shea and London just opening up some daylight now 10 points to 6 and again that little bit of energy what a super ball what a bit of vision to, to pick out that pass across the way when he kicked it through under what is he at until we saw uh, that man there Neil O'Shea free on the 20 metre line and he finished it with a plan just a couple of minutes ago now to half time but it's London leading Leitrim Longford by 10 points to 6 in this Challenge Cup final in London looking much the stronger side in the last 5 minutes or so they've got another chance for a point here with Connor Moan and Moan makes absolutely no mistake over the black spot and London really playing with real confidence now and they lead by 5 yeah, and you know, you're on about efficiency and scoring rate. They've, they've been really, really good on that front, especially in, in, in the last 10 minutes. Any chance they get from play, they're putting it over the bar. Like It's an example. You can see that they, they have their training put in. They look fit. They look to be getting, fit, getting stronger as the game goes on, and they're able to introduce those subs that are having that impact too. Good take from John Coyle. Leitrim Longford could do with the score here. He's blocked down those. He tries to play that one forward. Well gathered by Jonathan Douglas. And now the ball, first time forward. Well, there's plenty of grappling going on there between both players, and I think it's gone the way of London in the end. I think there was two players at it. Yeah, the Leitrim Longford man was claiming his jersey was being pulled. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of fabric free to, to be pulling on. I think the ref got that one right. And the free to be taken now by Vinnie Murphy. He's inside that 45 metre line by about seven or eight metres. So certainly within range with that wind at his back. That one though has sailed a long way out to the left. It's still going to stay on the field of play. Well, two Leitrim Longford men went for it. But then unable to capitalise was PJ Meehan. And that goes to the left and wide. 
PJ Meehan has been very impressive as a midfielder up and down the pitch and he's you know he's, he's getting a hand in disrupting all the time but I can see with him he gets so far forward he doesn't want to have a go himself you know he's been very smart in that laying the ball off and we could, we could see the reason for it there why so here comes Martin McHugh Big. drives that one down the field London 11 points Leitrim Longford 6 points in this Challenge Cup final ball gathered by Willie McDermott Inside it goes as Leitrim Longford into a period of possession that they haven't had in quite a while. Good tight defending there from Keith Garrity, just interrupting that attack, dispossessing Garrod Nerney, who was trying to take the ball as it was played forward into the very closing moments now of this first half. London building up now through the hands again with. Damien Fitzpatrick, remember, Leitrim Longford will have the breeze in the second half, which isn't insignificant. Certainly is helping London as they shoot for the post in this uh, first 30 minutes. Back outside again to Damien McKenna. Leitrim Longford with all of their players nearly behind the ball at this stage. Ed McGuigan goes for the return, plays it inside towards Meehan who also goes for the return off Damian McKenna. And now with the other midfielder and captain Gary Kane. Here's Damian McKenna back outside towards Connor Moan. Kicked a point earlier on in this half. Threads a ball across. Good one it is too. Well gathered by Thomas Gallagher. And now out across to the man who's made a big impact, Neil O'Shea. Hand pass inside as far as the man wearing 28, John Madigan. The attempt goes in just across the face of goal and wide and there is the half-time whistle so at the break it's London leading by 11 points to 6 against Leitrim Longford in this Challenge Cup final is that a fair reflection Con do you think on the first half? Yeah I think it is uh, you know midway through the half when, when, when Leitrim Longford had drawn level you were wondering where it had gone wrong for London because they, they were so much in control but they've re-established that and the, the subs have given them a new impetus some of the football they're playing is, 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 a, is a really good mix I suppose of the old style football that uh, most of these guys would have been used to playing when they played senior football first where, where they let the ball go but we can see them as well they're very measured they're very very well drilled. They're not. They're not kicking the ball away either. If, if it's on inside, they're, they're, they're giving the men inside a chance. Morris hadn't it started them off. The St. Brendan's man with the first couple of scores. Uh, but since that, they've had a nice range of scores and they've a lot of players. Like we've been tasked as well with picking man of the match. You know, if you're to do it at half time, there, there's a lot of guys in the mix that are up there on the eight, nine, ten out of ten kind of uh, bracket for Leitrim Longford. You know, we've been looking at the men we're mentioning there are you know Gerard Nerney. Mark Connor uh, and John Coyle at number six there you know the evergreen John Coyle he's been very very good but it's not for any want from the from the Leitrim Longford side but they're they're just second best in a lot of positions around the field thus far but they will have the wind in the second half might that help their cause it, it might I'm looking at it again kind of old school wondering what who they'd have that they'd put in there as a target man to use with that wind there's nobody really standing out but uh, we don't know who the, who they might who they might move in there but Mark Connor definitely if they can get enough of ball in around him and, and in around Nerney we saw Willie McDermott get a fine score as well mm. you know it's been a good game it's been enjoyable play, play, played at the right in, 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 the, in, in the right spirit the right manner uh, lots of respect out there you pointed out after one scuffle you know the players smiling with each other but there's a determination there that, that London are after bringing with them they've put so much into this call they've, they've travelled over six times this year three group games they to come for a playoff they to come they beat Cork in a semi-final they beat Leash in a playoff um, because they finished on the same points they beat Cork in a semi-final only last weekend and had to go and organise flights over for this weekend all out of their own pockets like mm. it's 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 fair play to them hats off to them um, and then they're flying back they have to leave here half an hour after the game uh, head for Dublin and they have to get three different flights out of Dublin to, to get home so nobody would begrudge London they're in the driving seat at the minute but Leitrim Longford have a great history in the Masters in finals um, in the last number of years a couple of years ago they won the second competition you were commentating down on that down in, down in Follies and Roscommon where, where they where they uh, where, where they had a great win over over Leash in, in the second competition last year they, they won the plate competition so or the challenge actually this competition they won the challenge cup last year um, so there will be a bite in them there will be a kick in them uh, but London just look so well set up and so composed and know what they're doing that you know they're, they're five points ahead even with that wind uh, the way they're playing the measured way they're playing I think they should have enough Well we'll be back with full second half coverage very shortly indeed but at half time in this challenge cup final it's London 11 points Leitrim Longford 6 points
it takes a team, it takes discipline, it takes focus, it targets, leadership. The difference is that there's no fine whistle for the MFC. Words like service, customer centered, focus, quality, garments. Way we do what we do, way we exist. That that's the big one. By a country night, MFC has provided for us in so many ways that we never expected. And we're back underway for this uh, Challenge Cup final. London leading by 11 points to six at half time. And they've started the second half well too. They're taking it forward with Michael Flynn. Flynn doing well, having a go here, but well, that's actually Joe McMahon, excuse me. And that's uh, easily gathered by Leitrim Longford, who do have the breeze in this second half. They showed enough in the first half to suggest that they can close down that deficit. As they take it forward now with the cornerback Enda McGar. Good work again from London at the back. Really tigerish defending from Chris Byrne. But then the foul committed. Oh, that's a red card. Whoa. It's a red card for Chris Byrne, it looks like. Oh, that's a huge pity for Chris Byrne. And I won't lie, I didn't see it. I was looking at a change in the programme there. The sub that was on for Lanford Leitrim. Oh, Just what's a coming together, yeah, was that. Uh, Michael Flynn and disappointing for Chris Byrne who's just been introduced had done well initially there 
in terms of tackling, but uh, he's got a red card. Oh, hugely disappointing for him because he is one of the, he was one of the guys from the very start in 2016. A really good player with them played for London in, uh, at senior level in the past. And I didn't I must say I didn't see it, but it wouldn't be his nature now to be to go in with a dirty challenge. Gerald Nerney plays it inside. Now Leitrim Longford with the opportunity. We've a perfect angle of that. It's not going to reach the goal. It'll drop around that penalty spot, and London have enough players back there to tidy it up. But how will that red card impact proceedings here? Well, it might just give Leitrim Longford a little bit of a boost at the start of the second half. There's the whistle sounds, and it looks like... Is it going to be a free in? Hot ball, I think he's Hot going, ball. is it? Yeah, it was, like, <laughs> it was like a rugby ruck there for a second. It was hard to know what was, what was happening with it. Um, that's a huge blow to London, but I do think they're fit enough and set up well enough mm. th that it, it might not be fatal, but only time will tell. Well, we shall see as that ball is thrown in, and Leitrim Longford have got it. Back outside to... Brady, very narrow angle here. Well, look at that for defending oh, again. Right. Superb work from the midfielder. That's uh, Gary Kane. Well, you mentioned it in the first half, Con, just how London have uh, really battled for possession everywhere. They're really putting their bodies on the line and evidence of that there again from the captain. Back outside and London having to work it through the hands, but with the player less now. Is that ball being carried forward along that far sideline. It's all very tight though and Joe McMahon runs out of green grass there. Out across the sideline. Back inside from Leitrim Longford. No surprise to see them not wasting any time here. Niall Brady's attempted ball inside is blocked down. He might get a second bite at the cherry here, the midfielder. And he does win possession back. But Leitrim Longford trailing by five. London 11. Leitrim Longford 6. Our stream here is brought to you with thanks to MFC Sports. And so far, we've been treated to a very entertaining contest here. With the Shield final between Donegal and Galway coming up from throwing at half past three. And that too will be live streamed with thanks to MFC. Oh, wayward kick. Ball across just isn't uh, brilliant. And Leitrim Longford forced into committing the foul. And that allows London to win a free in the middle of the field here. To be taken by Joe McMahon. Well, they look very comfortable on possession in the first half, London. They'll be hoping to control the game similarly here in the second. They put on that bit of a spurt in the closing stages of the first half that opened up the daylight. It was pretty tight for the first 20 minutes as the wing forward, John Reddington, who's uh, covered quite a bit of ground in this game so far, just being bottled up there. Good defending from Enda McGahart as he chases after again on this side. The midfielder, PJ Meehan, gets it in field. And now some time for Joe McMahon. It's all very tight. It's almost like a training drill here in front of us where you'd have four cones in a box and the yeah. tackling going on. But yeah. And in fairness, when, the, when, when London got the ball back out of the trouble up this wing, they had a chance to swing it out the far side. It would have stopped all of that. But it worked out well for them to keep possession. Yeah, Joe McMahon with the free. Angle ball. ball across into space where Mark Mulholland will chase after. But he's got three defenders for company. And one of them back there is uh, Jerry Carberry, who does well. But that's a loose hand pass picked up by Morris Hodnett, who started the game brilliantly with two of the opening scores, but was out of the action then for a little while. He surely has a lot left in the legs. He certainly has a very nice left boot. And here he goes with that left boot. What a lovely ball across that looked like, but it's well anticipated by John Coyle. And this allows Leitrim Longford to take it forward. So we've played five minutes now of the second half. We're yet to have a score. Ball forward from Justin Quinn. Looking for Garage Nerney. Ball beats him though. And it's tidied up by Brendan Mulhern. That's a loose one back Whoa. and it almost works out for Leitrim Longford. Well, the goalkeeper had to be alive to the danger. And London survived. The Leitrim Longford player has remained down. Let's hope he's okay. But almost, almost getting that ball into the back of the net. There's a free for London in the middle. 
Well, what about that for a goal chance? Because Leitrim Longford really haven't had a goal chance in this match. No, they haven't. And, and you get the sense that they're going to need one if they're going to win this, at least one if they're going to win this game. Because five points even now, you know, the game is so tight and every ball so well contested. It's hard to see them getting, say, six points unanswered. They're going to need a goal somewhere in the mix. And that was a, a, a chance out of nothing, if you like, out of a mistake. Um, but, you know, there's there's always that chance. And momentum in, in, in Masters, as in any game, um, is, a, is, a, is a funny thing. And if they got a goal, could give them a great lift. Well, Garage Nerney is okay after that collision with the goalkeeper at the other end of the field. Meantime, ball is with London inside the Leitrim Longford 45. London playing into a bit of a breeze in the first half. Or in the second half, rather. They had the breeze in the first half. So this one isn't really within range for Joe McMahon, who has two points already. Plays it short as far as Gary Kane. And now the opportunity from Joe McMahon. Very ambitious effort. Jonathan Douglas trying to keep this one on the field of play. And is he fouled? No, the referee's going to let that one continue and develop. London claiming that uh, they thought that was a free, but Leitrim Longford come away with possession. And the McGarren. Oh, that's a loose one inside, but gathered very well indeed. By the man wearing 14, Willie McDermott, kicked a point in the first half. And now inside towards... Justin Quinn, Carberry, very lively player, Carberry, look at him, Jin passed one, two challenges now, can he beat a third, well he's still going here, then plays the ball inside, just a little bit of an angle on the pass through, well the forward does brilliantly to win that, a wins are free as well, well that's really good work from Leitrim Longford because London were certainly favourites in that particular situation, but they've got themselves a free in and a good chance to open their second half account, looks like the number 24 for uh, Leitrim Longford and it's a free in I think it's Terry Kelleher it might be 23 hard to see those numbers there Carl. but he, as you said when that ball went in Damien McKenna and a super player Damien McKenna again a stalwart with London uh, you know he was favoured to win that but, but he did so well to, to, to free it up and to win the free and, and get the first score of the second half for Leitrim Longford yep so Leitrim Longford opened their account in the second half so four point game London 11 points Leitrim Longford seven points and it's still very very interesting here I'm just trying to keep an eye out here Con is Mark Connor still on the field for Leitrim Longford had a really good first half yeah, looks like he's just making his way in there he is in back is, on the yeah. field yeah on the edge of the, the, edge there, of the yeah. square yeah just making his way in as the ball in the middle now being battled for well, well I tell you what there's nothing been Aster given there and that man John Coyle again he is like a tiger oh be careful you don't want to go down to 13 here and that was Joe McMahon and it's a yellow card they're already down as Con says with uh, Chris Byrne receiving his marching orders at the start of this second half so possibly some momentum swinging the way of Leitrim Longford here but it's still London in charge on the scoreboard leading by 11 points to 7 here's the free being brought forward a good distance here Justin Quinn I think that's uh, Mark Connor now coming out to take a hold of it well he's a good distance out and our stream here brought to you with thanks to MFC Sports good hands from Carberry gets that one off then it comes back out around to the corner back Mel McCardle still there for Leitrim Longford can they get a shot away well that's gone over the head of Mark Connor gets back though to get that one as far as his full back Derek McKeown of Father Manning Gales McKeown trying to burrow his way through a couple of challenges dispossessed and London take a hold of possession 10 minutes gone now in this second half London leading by 11 points to 7 much more of a cagey second half compared to the rather free flowing stuff that we had in the first Leitrim Longford chasing down every ball that's uh, out there to be won and they've got possession back. Good work on the far side. Comes back to Derek McKeown who goes down the same side again. We can see Martin McHugh, the goalkeeper, but on the sideline now rather than in between the sticks. He's urging his players on. Experienced manager too on the club scene. As Brenda Mulhern taking possession out but there's a player down. 
Yeah, Brendan O'Hearn did really well with that high ball in. Uh, you can see London, they've withdrawn, you know, I suppose they have to, they're a man down. The, the, the big numbers back, but what that is doing is it is inviting Leitrim Longford onto them. You can see here the Leitrim Longford at times have two, maybe three fellas free out in front of us around the middle of the field. So when London are breaking out, they've guys to win their contest. And they really have up the ante in terms of their, their, their challenges and their intensity. They were off it a bit in the first half compared to London, but they've mat at least matched it in the last number of minutes, and that puts them in with a real shout. Certainly does certainly does as London take this free everybody's okay to continue that ball inside again two Leitrim Longford players converging in on it but London work out that particular situation quite well it's with PJ Meehan met by the challenge there of McGarren back outside towards Jonathan Douglas and now in the arms of David Cannon who had a good first half but there's the extra body or two for Leitrim Longford just working out well there in their own 45 metre line and they've got themselves a free they'll be very happy with the start that they've made here but that's another good intervention in the middle well how did the referee see that one we had a different angle <laughs> yeah. to the referee yeah. we may have made a different decision yeah I think I think it is a London free but he'll probably hop it will he I think there was two in that <laughs> as they say <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. There's the cuteness uh, coming into play from both players, but I think the referee is giving this one London's way. Yeah, I think the first foul was, I, I, I do think PJ Meehan got, got pulled down on top of the, the, mm. the Leitrim Longford player. He's definitely field, that London midfield have just been everywhere. They've been so much ball working so hard at the heart of everything that's going on out there. Certainly have, as that free is taken quickly. Damien Fitzpatrick. He's had a good game at corner back, but he's popped up all over the field. Now it's with Damien McKenna. But again, London happy enough to keep a hold of possession in this area of the field and just uh, suck the life out of this little bit of a spurt that Leitrim Longford have put on. Now they make the incision with McKenna. Tight angle on that far side. He struck it brilliantly. Just off target. Not a bad attempt at all. But we mentioned at half-time, Con, there haven't been many wides at all in this match. No, definitely not. I think that might be London's only their, their second wide. I know they're wide for, from a misplaced pass, but their second wide going for the posts, which is a remarkable return. Uh, but a score for London there would have been absolutely huge because it would be another two that Leitrim Longford would have to get to win it. Ball down into the middle. There to be battle for. Well, Quinn did well for Leitrim Longford to get that one away to a teammate getting involved then is Willie McDermott. And Leitrim Longford hanging tough in this match. They're still right there as they try and build another attack. London just uh, holding that one up. Well, the referee's bringing that free in. It's... Uh, John Reddington there getting involved for London. Now it's a scorable free though, you would yeah. think, for Mark Connor with that bit of a draft at his back. Three points in the first half, four points rather, in this match. And this one will close it down to a three-point game. London leading by 11 points to seven. 14 minutes gone now in the second half. Here's Mark Connor. Might not have the distance, just drops into the goalkeeper's arms and London come away with possession. But just the one score count in 14 minutes. You can see the difficulty for London here. Like there's banks of Leitrim Longford players ready to meet them on the way out. And there's one of them winning it back. Is that a free? It is. It is surely, yeah. Tight angle, but not quite as far out for Mark Connor this time if he's interested in taking on the shot. But they're chipping away all the time, aren't they, at the scoreboard? They've just got that one score, but they've had a, a couple of different attacks and had half a goal chance as well, Leitrim Longford. So all to play for as we head into the final quarter. Connor this time certainly has the distance, oh. not the accuracy though. Yeah, and that's a few that, they, that they've left behind them, you know, that they haven't been as accurate as London and they, they could look back to, to rue those chances. You get the sense with the game, Carl, that Leitrim Longford are definitely the, the, the push on and the press on, but you get the sense that London are going to find a score out of somewhere that's going to give them a bit, bit, bit of uh, impetus again and a bit of life. But we'll, we'll wait and see. Of course, a goal, as we said, for Leitrim Longford would really shake things up. And, and you know, for, if, you, if you were a neutral here watching it, that's what you'd like to see. Definitely not. If you're a London supporter, if you're Leitrim Longford, of course, you go for it. But even for a neutral, I think it would add great interest to tighten it up. Kick out, low trajectory. And again, Leitrim Longford have got it. So they just need to start making this extra possession that they've had start to count. But they've coughed it up momentarily. Well, no nonsense defending there from Derek McKeown. Launches it forward. But that one is just gone out over the sideline. And a line ball for London down there. 
as they build from the back now. Met by a couple of challenges, but that one inside. John Coyle is coming up on it for Leitrim Long for great defending from him. Good tackling from both teams in this game. You'd have to say it's been very physical for the ball carrier in this match. They've certainly been met with challenges of real physicality as McKenna drives it forward. This ball just might have too much pace on it for even a man of Mark Mulholland's pace, but he's kept that one on the field of play and that's opened up things now for London. Inside towards Hodnett. Leitrim Longford looking a tad exposed. Hodnett still has it. Jinking one way, then the other. Good hand in from Eamon McAvoy. Forcing Hodnett back towards his own goal. London get the attack back underway, but then just standing on possession was the man wearing 28, John Madigan. Back outside towards Jonathan Douglas. London having to be very, very measured indeed. Back inside towards Madigan once again. Hand pass out outside. Leitrim Longford still committing lots of bodies to the defence. That one has gone over the bar. Well, what a kick. That's Hodnett again. That's an Hodnett. outrageous kick. <laughs> it's an outrageous <laughs> kick from Morris Hodnett. Well, I don't think anyone on the ground thought that a shot was on from there. He certainly did. And that could be a big score. They lead by five again. That's a that's a massive score for him. And I can see, I think he's he's coming off there now. He was involved with the play there. That's the beauty of the Masters. Roll on, roll off. You, you, that's a real mic drop. You, you kick your <laughs> point from out there and then you come off to the sideline. <laughs> but, it, you know, it, he, he, he had a lot, of, a lot of involvement in that. And that's, that's a massive score for London. So they lead by 12 points to seven, London. It's as you were in terms of the halftime advantage. As Leitrim Longford, although they've dominated possession, not quite making a count on the scoreboard. They have an extra player as well after Chris Byrne was dismissed for London earlier in this half. But we're now taking into the 18th minute. And it's very much London in the ascendancy here in this Challenge Cup final. Stream brought to you live with thanks to MFC Sports. And we'll also have Donegal against Galway in the Shield final for you from half three. Yeah, you can see there's the bounce about London again. You know, they were under the cosh a little bit there. That score has given them that bit of momentum again, that bit of bit of forward go about them. Great yeah. ball. That is a tremendous ball. And it looks like uh, Mulholland there. He's had a very good game. Very busy. Mark Mulholland. Great scores as well. Uh, and, and the man who kicked the ball forward to him there, uh, Paddy, Paddy Donaghy. It was a super ball. It had to be inch perfect uh, or he was going to get decapitated. He took a hit as it was, but uh, you know that some of the passing, some of the football played by London has, has been, been excellent. Three goals back towards their own goal. This man has had a big role to play as well. Damien McKenna has had a really good game so far. Just bottled up by two challengers there and I think he's touched the ball on the ground according to uh, Kieran Quinn. That you have to admire that with Leitrim Longford, it, it's not going for them, but they're still working hard, you know. Uh, and I think the man that epitomizes that we mentioned him a few times, uh, John Coyle. We see him out here under, still going, you know, he's been on the whole game, no breather for him. Um, but all around, you know, they're working hard. Super defending again from Damien Fitzpatrick, just got out in front there to disrupt his opposite number, and that allows London to take possession again. Ball inside loops a little bit, but it's uh, gathered by John Madigan. Plays it across. PJ Meehan involved once more, the midfielder. Con, you've mentioned the midfield pairing as well for London, who've been to the four for them throughout this match. Yeah, um, the sold us a dummy. They were that good. The sold us a dummy with the numbers <laughs> in the first half, Carl. They're eight and nine. Are, 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 they, they switched over. Maybe it was a superstition thing, but either way, they're a really good, strong combination. You know that the the, the the football that that um, that we've seen uh, PJ Meehan bring. He given some unbelievable passes, and then the hard work of Gary Kane, both working really hard. They're they're they're, they're a, a midfield team. You'd, you'd see them in, in in any club would work very very well. You know, yeah. so um, I think that's been the engine room for them. You've mentioned as well, Jimmy McKenna at six has played a lot of ball, and you know he, he's 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 moving as well now as he was in the first five minutes. And here, Leitrim Longford look like they've got it back. They have, and London just running the bench there as well. They're bringing in some fresh legs. So that's the benefit of having extra players with them today as we head into the final 10 minutes. London leading Leitrim Longford by 12 points to 7. They led by 11 points to 6 at half-time. It's been a 
cagey second half thus far, but as Con says, a goal here would really breathe life into the Leitrim Longford challenge. I see Brendan Phillips there on as well. Local interest, Brendan played for Sligo, that, that, that great Sligo team that got to a quarter final beaten by replay by Armagh in 2002, has come in there, number 25. Leitrim Longford building up comes back outside towards looks like Garage Nerney plays it across the field well anticipated by uh, Gary Kane and London now launching a counter attack there's actually no one from a London point of view in front of him Mark Mulholland now has got up into that uh, forward situation and he's the only man here to give oh, a hand that's ball. a great hand pass over the top and now it's opening up for Mulholland good hand in from the defender, the shot, oh, it's just oh. wide. But you know what? The cornerback did well there, Ender McGarham, with a little bit of a shoulder that just stopped him. Uh, Mulholland making his way towards goal. Absolutely, but in fairness to Gary Kane, the captain, the amount of work he put in there, you know, carried the ball up. As you said, there was nobody inside from, held on to it, you know, shipped a couple of challenges. Uh, the best player, uh, for, from where I'm looking at it, for, for Leach from John Coyle again, you know, hit him a right rattle. He kept composure, and then the ball over the top for, for Mark Mulholland. It was that backdoor cut, you know, it, it really deserved a score, but it wasn't to be. High kick it, oh, that's a big collision in the Ooh. middle. Niall Brady was under it. In fairness to the man coming in from the back, I think he would eyes only for the ball. Yeah, he's, that's that man, Paddy Donaghy again. He's been right in the mix of it. I thought he went fairly for the ball. I don't Maybe he was pushing the back, Carl. Is that yeah. what it looked like? Yeah. Well, it's a free, and thankfully Niall Brady's okay as well. And Leitrim Longford happy enough to play it back towards their own goal. But I think, as you say, Conor, goal now becoming... Pretty crucial here for Leitrim Longford. Well, that ball went side was a dangerous one, but it works out for Leitrim Longford momentarily. But then it spills away, and no surprise to see that man, Gary Kane, back there. And London now can see that finish line coming into the side. Lovely feet from Brendan Phillips, the former Sligo player on home turf today. Foul on Damien Fitzpatrick. Free for London. Yeah, people from the Eastern Harps Club would be probably relieved for Brendan. He didn't get the ball back there because once he goes up over the 45, it'd be nosebleed stuff. <laughs> <laughs> He's a cornerback by trade and that's where they, they keep him close to their own goal. Back outside towards Kane again. It's Patrick, the cornerback. Out towards uh, Paddy Donaghy, another man who's had an impressive game, as you say, Con. Inside towards Joe McMahon now. Well, it's just well, it's opened up oh. here for Joe McMahon. Not quite sure what's going on there defensively, but it's still inside. Donaghy ships the hit. Fair. Well, was it fair? No, it wasn't. Yeah, it looked like that must be for. I think it was the foul on Donaghy, was it? Yeah, yeah, it looked like it was. Yeah, it looked like it. That's what the free is for. In just the outside the penalty area. Yeah, and in fairness to Donaghy, he's he's had a super game. He's been up and down the pitch, uh, and I'd say when he got that ball back, he he was thinking a goal. Uh, he didn't see that challenge coming, and the reason he didn't see it coming was it was into his back. But um, again, London, just the way they move the ball, their team play has been has been remarkable. And this is a chance for all Leitrim Longford's dominance in the second half. This would actually put London two points to one ahead in the second half, yeah. and pad that lead out to six. If. Uh, Joe McMahon can negotiate this from the just inside the 21 metre line and no problem for the centre half forward and London lead by 13 points to 7 now with 6 minutes of normal time left to play yeah, more subs the, the, the glory of that you know a guy works hard for 5-10 for, for ten, ten minutes and you can, you can switch him around again and that's what they started doing the second half being on the fresh legs Joe McMahon pushing right up here on Leitrim Longford are just labouring coming out of possession but they've got themselves a free now John Coyle very impressive for Leitrim Longford today plays this one down now it's with the man wearing number 14 Willie McDermott but just a loose pass inside not going to hand and London have it Win it back. They had the advantage there too, but play allowed developed by Kieran Quinn. Our stream brought to you with thanks to MFC Sports. And we've got Donegal against Galway coming up at half three. Don't forget as we head into the final five minutes of this Challenge Cup final. London 13 points. Leitrim Longford 7 points. As Gary Kane bringing it forward. Look at that for driving runs from Kane through the 
heart of the defence comes back outside towards Neil O'Shea who kicked two points in the first half and you can just see the game management now from London very impressive throughout the course of the match but particularly now at this stage as they wind down the clock watching that finish line come into view well just as I say that the ball is touched on the ground by Keith Geraghty and it's a free for Leitrim Longford and a chance to launch a counter here they've only got one man inside in the full forward line and he's actually running out towards the 45 so they just need to get bodies forward and green shirts here is it at the stage where you launch one or two in around the edge of the square con I think it is yeah I think you have to go stone age with it there's no point in tip and tapping around the fringes let it in and see what happens oh that's oh. a big hit oh. Brendan Phillips in fairness to him I think the player may just have uh, gone a little lower than he had anticipated as he went for the shoulder yeah Brendan does a very good innocent face I'd say he'll get away <laughs> with a yellow and it is yeah. a yellow for Brendan Phillips it's a free in for Leitrim Longford thankfully it's, uh, is that Derek Kelleher that's uh, back up on his feet wearing 23 yeah. and now it's uh, Niall Brady will he just pop this one in around the square he will let's see what oh, comes of this take. oh it spills dangerously but what it looked like as you say Con, that Leitrim Longford had actually won that one in there didn't quite come off though and now Joe McMahon for London driving down the other end of the field look at the legs that they still have even at this late stage 27 minutes into the second half in this Challenge Cup final London 13 points Leitrim Longford 7 points Brendan Phillips in acres of space here on this left hand side just one player inside in the full forward line though four defenders trotting back in front of him so London have to go back towards their own goal you can see some of the players from the Donegal and Galway teams making their way into the ground now and supporters as well great hospitality as always from the Omar Gales club who are hosting a Sligo club championship game here later on today as well so it just goes to show how good the playing surface is that they can take three games on a day here's Leitrim Longford pushing right up London making hard work of this period of possession and then eventually they bring it out into a more favourable area lovely little skill there from London as they bring it out from the back with their full back Ed McGuigan keeping the ball here with ease you wouldn't think they've got a player less on the field London the way they're keeping possession here in this particular period of play then Joe McMahon commits the foul and Leitrim Longford have the free but time really coming against them now just 90 seconds of normal time left to play they trail by 6 13 points to 7 yeah, and you can see for David Igo, Frank Kane has been in and goals for the whole of the second half. They've done that every game and they've held with it. They've held to their, you know, their principles on that. We saw him involved in the, in the play there earlier on. This is, you know, it looks like it's going to be a really rewarding day for David for all the hard work he's put in and for all the London side. There is a shot from Leitrim Longford, but out to the left and wide. And well, they need all of them to be sailing between the posts at this stage. Yeah, they're just starting to look a little bit leggy now, Leitrim Longford. As you, know, as you mentioned there, Carl, and, and Ed Wright, you wouldn't, if you were asked what team were down to 14 men, you'd never guess it was London. You know, they're, they're just playing so well for each other. They're looking great, Nick, in great shape, very comfortable on the ball, uh, and their game management that you've alluded to as well ha has been excellent. So the goalkeeper, Frank Kane, with the kick out. Again, that breeze still blowing fairly hard towards the dressing room and Brendan Phillips does well to win possession London again working it through the hands so composed when they have that size 5 in the hand and they get it across to that far side Thomas Gallagher still moving it with real purpose London all the way across from Paddy Donaghy all of this happening on their own 21 metre line they'd like to just move maybe a little bit further up the field Leitrim Longford have pushed forward just uh, one player from either side well two players from Leitrim Longford in their own half and one London player so Leitrim Longford setting out their stall here pushing right up and they've got themselves the possession back they've forced the over carry have to give them credit they're fighting right to the very end here and the tackling of both teams has been very impressive in this match. It's getting brought in as well, I think, yeah. 
but it's not a point. Well, they need a point of the points as well, but they, you know, it's, it looks like it's going to need two goals to, to get a draw on it. Yeah, we're into added time, you would say, at the end of the 30. So, Niall Brady, decision time. Is it a case of launching it in there? Well, this one might have the legs to go all the way over, and it does. Niall Brady, who's had a good afternoon at centre field, pops it over, but really it's goals instead of points that they need at this stage, Con. It is, but you, you have to say again, Leitrim Longford, they haven't given up. You know, London have been the better team, and they've been fighting an uphill battle the whole way, but they're still diving in there. You can see there the pressure that they put on uh, when Brendan Mulhern was coming out with the ball. He looked to have broken a tackle, and then there was two more waiting for him. You have to take your hat off to, to, to Leitrim Longford on that. Um, but today is not their day uh, and uh, you know as as Frank Kane gets to, to kick it out here you wonder how much longer there hasn't been any injuries in this half I don't think we'll have too much extra time to well, play we've played 31 minutes now it's uh, London 13 points Leitrim Longford 8 points the closing stages of this Masters Challenge Cup final coming to you live from Colooney in County Sligo brought to you with thanks to MFC Sports on our stream today well gathered back there by Ed McGuigan Foraging back there in the corner back position. And London now looking for what would be a historic breakthrough. Big title reward for their efforts throughout the course of this season. Joe McMahon, one of the star performers today. Three points for him, three for Morris Hodnett as well. And here is the aforementioned full forward. Looks so comfortable on possession and threads that one back out around. Here's Gary Kane now, the midfielder. And just winding down the clock now, London, as they look to take that silverware back across the Irish Sea. Kieran Quinn is looking at the watch. Still we play. My watch says 32 and a half minutes gone. But London, having led by 11 points to six at half time, have managed this game brilliantly in the second half despite the dismissal of Chris Byrne. Hunnett is fouled. It's a free. And he's just going to wind down the clock here as well. Just wants to receive some attention. But in terms of the overall situation, Con, for the Masters to see London, uh, yep. it looks like now that they will win this match and, and, and take some silverware. But it has to be a positive for the association in general. Oh, it's huge. Like, there were a big boost when they came in six years ago. David took it on and really tough on them to organise all that. The trips over, the trips back, the logistics of it. But the counties that go over, it's a highlight of the year when you do go over and play. I've uh, been lucky enough to go over with Sligo myself. Like, they really roll out the red carpet. Uh, they clad a ring over there great sponsors put on food there's great crack after the matches you know to play in Sheer Connell Gales some of the counties get to play in Ricelip it's, it's, it's absolutely superb so this is huge for them and, and just reward for, for the work that they've put in I remember we played them Sligo played them down in Swinford the first year they were in in 2016 we gave them a bit of a hockey in uh, I remember chatting with them afterwards and there we go and there is the full time whistle and London win the Challenge Cup final they've beaten Leitrim Longford by 13 points to 8 they led by 11 points to 6 at half time and they padded that out in the second half and managed the game very very well indeed 3 points for Joe McMahon 3 as well for Morris Hanna 2 for Mark Mulholland a very impressive performance all things considered and London Con I think it's fair to say deserving winners Oh fully deserving winners and, and you know really I'm delighted for them Leitrim Longford are, are, are a great bunch of lads as well and have, have given an awful lot to the Masters but nobody could begrudge London anybody within the Masters as I mentioned when you go over there you're treated so well I'll go back to that in 2016 when they played uh, the first time we were up and running a year we were going really well give them a bit of a hockey in but you know they kept at it kept at it got better every year got their first win two years later uh, got a number of wins this year like to travel over and play Leash and play Cork and now to beat Leach from Longford absolutely superb for them delighted for them for all that they've put in you can see what it means to the players I know they're uh, whatever age they are 40 plus all of them but uh, it means so much to them as a group um, and it's fantastic for them it's not easy anyone you know that, that knows people over in London involved with clubs even it's not easy logistically to meet up for training and these guys have been doing it since last, uh, you know, since before Christmas, and you could see it in them. Their their their, their strength and conditioning, mark their fitness was was excellent. As you mentioned, even when they were down to 14, they were going so strong and going so strong at the end of the game um, that really there was no way that Leitrim Longford could break them down. Mm. And Leitrim Longford, for, you mentioned as well in the commentary, Con, that they certainly didn't give up, but maybe just didn't make the most of the possession that they had there in the second half to eat into that deficit. Yeah, very true. And I know they were missing a couple of players today through, through injury. JP McManus is a guy that's good for scores. We see in the list there 
as well. Paul Barden and David Barden would have been fantastic players for Longford. Paul Barden played international rules at, at senior level. A player like that would have given them a real boost, you know, when you see five points, if, if you have those guys there, would that would that close it up? Um, I, I thought, did, as, you, as you mentioned, though, they kept going. John Coyle there, like the man just goes and goes and goes and goes. He, he, he doesn't know stop intercepting balls, driving forward, all of that. Uh, it, you know, he was he was excellent. And there was guys all around that, that, that threw their, their body on the line, but they were just beaten. You know, they, they'd have no complaints today. They were beaten by the better team. Uh, and I know that uh, James Breslin and, and Seamus Soran there, the, the management, they'll be the first to shake the hands of it with, with, with David Igo, with Huey Brennan, with Anthony Gleeson and say, well done. They'll be absolutely delighted for them. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, the spoils, you know, the, 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 where the rest the, they're well deserved you know they, they, they deserve that fully today and in an overall sense uh, Con, considering this is the Challenge Cup final as you mentioned and there's the different tiers in the competition but the standard of that match was very very high yeah, I, I, I fully agree with you. So when you think that these teams, if, you, if we go to the, the, the table at the back, so after the, the round of, of league games, London finished uh, joint 16th with Leash. So that's why they had to go for a playoff. So it just shows the standard. That's where they finished in the group stages. Uh, but you can see uh, where they're at then. Uh, and you do see a difference in, maybe in the speed um, more so than anything else. Uh, as you go up, um, uh, you'll see a, a big difference in it. Maybe, it, well, I'll get killed by the London guys, but you will see you will see a difference in intensity in, in the Shield final, the second competition between Donegal and Galway. That doesn't mean it's going to be a better game by any manner. It means mm-hmm. we saw some great scores there, but it just shows the value when you've got teams playing against teams at the same level, uh, the value in it. No more than the Talshan Cup, I suppose, that, that we have. We've two tiers now in, the, in senior uh, senior championship football. Uh, we, we all start off in the one competition, but then we break into to four different ones, and you can see the value in that uh, in the game that we got there today. Yeah, we certainly can, and that uh, we very much enjoyed the Shield final but it's uh, London the winners 13 points to 8 we'll have the presentation and we'll also have a man of the match presentation uh, for you very shortly indeed on our stream here sponsored by MFC Sports and don't forget that we have Donegal against Galway coming up for you from uh, half past 3 but we might take just a little bit of a a break here on the stream before we get back underway for the presentation uh, in a couple of moments time but London the Challenge Cup champions they've beaten Leitrim Longford by 13 points to 8 don't go away we'll have the presentation for you very shortly indeed It takes a team, it takes discipline, it takes focus, targets, leadership. The difference is that there's no playing muscle with MFC. Words like service, customer centered focus, quality, garments. Way we do what we do, way we exist. That that's the big one. By a country made, MFC has provided for us in so many ways that we never expected.
Is it still filming? So we'll go filming now, we'll go filming for the presentation. Just check. Yeah. Remove the two teams over here. Where's the camera? Come on, I had to say to my dad, I had to say hello to him. Underneath you as well, you know, this is the stream. I look out, yeah, 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 just you so you know it. what I'm doing. Yeah, 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 that's fine. Hello, lads. Uh, on behalf of the on behalf of the Gaelic Masters Association, I'd like to welcome you all here to our, our finals. Uh, a, a great spectacle today, lads. Uh, a very worthy winners in uh, London, first time ever. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Lond London Masters on winning their competition. First and foremost, I'd like to thank the Owen Moore Gales GA Club for hosting our doubleheader. A privilege to be here and a privilege to work with them. A great club. Uh, I'd like to compliment all their staff on the ground for helping us, parking cares, um, linesmen, etc. So thank you very much, Owen Moore Gales. Where, 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 one, where does one start with the story of London Masters? Well, probably it starts five years ago, maybe six years ago, the phone call uh, back in November from David Igo to me in relation to bringing a, in a London team. And he definitely gave me headaches over that Christmas. He, a very persuasive man, David Igo, as you all know. Uh, that's the, one of the main reasons why you're here today, lads, is because of the work David Igo put in five, six years ago to get London involved in this competition. We have had many obstacles over the years, lads, to have London involved. But I assure you, every obstacle was met with a challenge, uh, with a, a hand on heart to make it succeed. And that's why it's such a pleasure to have you over in the final today. Also, it has been a pleasure for all the counties to go over to play in London. And the hospitality over in London is second to none, lads. And I'd like to thank you very much for giving the hospitality to all the travelling teams over. So thank you. To our officials today, lads, uh, I'd like to say thank you very much to our referee, linesman. Couldn't happen without you. Uh, once again, thanks very much, lads. <laughs> we have, unfortunately, Leitham Longford here uh, defeated. They won the same competition last year, lads, to James Breslin and Seamus Sorhan. Uh, I'd like to compliment you on your efforts. Uh, it has been um, a long journey. We have had over 60 games and we're here in finals today. So I'd like to commiserate with Leitham Long for today. <laughs> and finally, uh, I'd like to call on our man of the match, Gary Kane from London. Last but le not least, I'd like to call the captain, 
Gary Kane once again to receive the cup on behalf of the London Masters. Gary, for say a few words. Well, uh, I think a lot of the, the generic thank yous have been done for us. So uh, first of all, I wanted to dedicate this to Punches Redigan, a uh, proud Leitrim man, a proud London Gale, and like all the other stalwarts in London, it keeps the fire going in the belly as far as GAA goes over in London. So I want to dedicate this to Punches. Uh, the Longford Leitrim lads, you give us a stern test again today. Like it's always hard and fair, and we like it. Like we're obviously uh, we're quite physical ourselves, and uh, I have to say it was a good, honest game. So thank you and hard luck and commiserations. We wouldn't be here at all without the wags and the children letting us away for the weekends. And uh, it goes without saying. They're going to get the winter off now. We've uh, trained really hard through the pandemic when we had no games. We were away for weekends and maybe we shouldn't have been. But uh, thank you, anyone who's listening to all the, all the wives and girlfriends. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to keep you too long because we'll miss the bus to the airport. But uh, uh, I'd like to thank as well the sponsors, uh, London Tower Crane. Uh, managed by our very own big dog, Paddy Donaghy, uh, part of the JRL group, uh, owner uh, John Reddington here on the team, the Clatter Ring, and lots of other uh, silent sponsors and anonymous sponsors who've dipped their hands in their pocket all year. Uh, thank you very much to all of you. It's been mentioned already, but we wouldn't he be here without Dave Igo. He's got a thankless job. My God, a logistical nightmare. And... Uh, you know, we really didn't appreciate how much is involved in it, but Dave, this is five years in the, in the building and we're going to build on it again for you for, for, for the next five years. Yeah. And last but not least, these hardy bunch of men who've just been super dedicated all year. You know, they've self-funded trips over to Ireland. They've trained, as I said, trained really hard through the pandemic when we had nothing to aim for. You know, we've, we've become really close. We're from different counties, different clubs, different codes, different countries. And it's really kind of unified us all. And I hope uh, it's made a friendship for life with every one of you lads. So thank you very much. I'll hand you back now to John Pat and uh, enjoy the night, lads. Just before we go, lads, I'd like to thank Sean from MFC Sports. He's here today for sponsoring our live streaming of our four main finals, two today and two next week. Thanks very much, Sean. Much appreciated. Uh, on behalf of the Gaelic Masters, uh, I wish London a safe journey home. You're flying out this evening at 8 o'clock, so enjoy your journey home, lads, and I'm sure you'll have a, a big night in the clatter ring. Thank you very much. Group, group photo, lads. I thought it was one of the four that was